Are you on the journey of getting a purple weapon at the start of every game of Cold War Zombies? Well, today's video is for you. Hello there, my name is Justin from Day Night, and today we're going to be walking you through the Forsaken Easter Egg. This is easily one of my favorite Easter eggs in Cold War Zombies, I'm very excited about this. The very first step is actually going to be, in my personal opinion, the best way to start. It's going to be starting with the Psy melee weapon, as you'll need to get melee kills later on, and just running up until wave 6 in the starting room. Now that we're on round 6, we're going to step through the teleporter and just follow my pathing. You're going to get some free points from the Juggernaut machine to your left and just hop on up and open these doors. We're going to be doing two things at the same time. We're going to be getting the pieces for the teleporter to go down to the bunker. At the same time, we're going to be doing this side easter egg. So you do need Ether Shroud um, and have that to be charged. You're going to use it on this door and it's going to open up this secret area. You're going to grab a piece of pizza there, or a pizza box, and then you're going to follow my pathing yet again. Thankfully, the uh, the pizza places that you need to deliver to are actually right next to parts for the teleporter, so you can do both of these at the same time with relative ease. So just follow my pathing path and it'll be just fine. As you saw there, I dropped off a slice of pizza, and then, or the pizza box, and then I grabbed an item that was glowing in gold, much like the d machine stuff where you need to get the stuff for the ether meter or whatever that item is called. All these items you need for the teleporter will be glowing in gold. So you're just going to rinse and repeat for all the slices, grabbing all the pieces for the teleporter. Once you've gotten all the teleporter pieces and redeemed all your rewards from Ronald Raygun, I usually grab a set of armor if he doesn't give me one, and then I'm gonna go repair the teleporter. This is gonna take you down to the underground bunker section. You're just gonna follow the layout of the map until you reach the second teleporter leading to the top section with Pack-a-Punch. There's going to be an abomination waiting at the end of the hallway next to the, pack the teleporter. He's gonna come out of it and try to attack you. Just defeat him, and then you can step through the teleporter. Stepping through the teleporter, we are going to be able to lift the lockdown and then hit an off uh, site button, which is going to initiate your ability to do the rest of the Easter egg. It's this button on the wall right here. This is going to initiate a cutscene, and then you'll be able to start doing more Easter egg steps. So I'm going to skip the cutscene here right in a minute. Once the cutscene has concluded, you can uh, move on with the next steps. Usually I put dead wire on my sides because you'll need that to unlock the RC car later on in the Easter egg. That way you can get the parts, so then I will zip down to the bottom here and do just that. I'm actually going to go over to the arcade section here and hit this uh, machine on the side of the wall to give me a free token. I'm going to use this to play the Nocturne Toten uh, arcade game for the free salvage. Basically, I'm saving up salvage so I can buy a flamethrower for a part for the Wonder Weapon later on. 
What's a nice tip about this uh, Nocturne Toten arcade machine is you can actually apply blueprints to your weapons, giving you more ammo, a sight, etc. Because you're going to want to maximize headshots during this arcade game. As you have limited bullets and your melee is basically scaled back to World at War melee. You don't have a fancy knife melee anymore. But every time you complete a round, you're going to get a spawn in of some salvage. After two rounds, you're going to get a spawn in of a DMR. Again, you can apply a blueprint to that as well. Just kill the zombies, try to beat the time limit, and if you complete all three of the waves in a timely fashion, you're going to get a jumbo crate spawn in, and by that point, you should have enough salvage to buy yourself a flamethrower. After that, I'm going to head back to this section, stand in this corner, and wait for an abomination to bum rush me. If he rushes you and hits the wall, it'll drop a canister you need later on. Next, you can use the same abomination to zap this crystal right here. If he zaps it with his laser beam, it'll get you an, uh, a crystal for the wonder weapon. As you can see, there he is zapping. I'm just going to run around, grab the crystal, and continue with my day. Next, I'm going to run back to the arcade, running around killing zombies, waiting for one of them to trip dead wire next to this arcade cabinet. Once I get one that trips the dead wire, the arcade cabinet's going to come to life, and for 2,000 points, you can summon an RCXD that you'll need later on to get a part uh, for the Easter egg. After clearing out some zombies, I head back to the arcade machine. Again, 2,000 points is going to deploy the RCXD. He's going to have this little bubble thing that does kill zombies, so be expecting to potentially end the round. Jumping over this cabinet and having the bubble knock off this vent, riding the car all the way to the end there, and then igniting it will actually blow up a TNT or a, a TV through the wall that you need for the, uh, the buildable parts near the end of the Easter egg. Next, heading back to the other side of town, if we uh, stand on top of that yellow crystal, it's going to spawn in some waves of enemies, and at the same time, we're going to zap that red dude with the flamethrower, giving us the second crystal. To get the third crystal, we're doing that right now, you're just going to beat the waves of uh, boss zombies, first starting off with some plague hounds, then you're going to get into some uh, avogadros, I don't remember what they're called in this game, uh, and then next up, you're going to have mimics. After all those are dead, uh, you're going to go back to the crystal, and you'll be able to pick it up. Side tip, if at any point you are short on points or just want to get some extra points and you have a token, if you go play Enduro, I highly recommend playing this game a lot. It gives you quite a lot of points and it's very, very easy to get the maximum output basically every single time. If you just follow my pathing on playing the game, we're actually going to be playing Enduro a lot throughout this Easter egg for its juicy free points. And if you're getting kills near the arcade area, a lot of zombies will drop tokens so you can just keep playing this game multiple times around. Next, we're going to teleport down back into the bunker area to deposit our crystal parts, and we're going to get melee kills next to it. That's where the size are going to come in handy here. Getting enough melee kills will cause it to erupt and will give you your free uh, crystal axe. Uh, crystal axe? Crystal axe? It's one of those. <laughs> it's uh, the alien uh, forsaken-ish weapon. Uh, it turns into an axe, or if you push up on the d-pad, it turns into a machine gun. Then you're going to take it down to the area before the bunker, and you're going to start a lockdown sequence. I don't believe this is a soul box. I believe it's timed, but if you want to get melee kills, you go right ahead. Again, you can grab some free arcade tokens. I'm going to speed it up a lot, uh, like times four speed, and then I'll come back here in just a moment. Once the lockdown is completed, you can grab your part, and now you have every part you need for the end of the Easter egg. You just need to fill the canisters, and I'll show you how to do that here in a second. You're going to go down to the bunker area first, grabbing, uh, shooting all these orbs, changing to the axe, and slicing this open. 
This is gonna give you a crystal, which you can throw like a grenade into the abomination. Once you can see it start chewing, you can kill the abomination and grab the new crystal. You're gonna do this in two other locations. The first one being in this area right on top of the roof. Same exact thing, chopping that up, killing the abomination, moving on. And the last area is in this spawn room. Again, shooting the orbs, hitting the crystal, killing the abomination and you are fully good and actually legitimately ready for a boss fight. You could technically go straight to the boss fight after the step. You are already basically done with the Easter egg. So the rest of this is gonna be getting ready for the boss fights. As for getting triple pack-a-punch, you already know what we're doing. We are playing Enduro multiple, multiple times to get us those free juicy points to triple pack-a-punch our Crystal Axe. As for getting the free perks though, there is a side Easter egg for that. So if you don't wanna spend your points, follow what I'm doing here. I'm gonna throw a grenade in the wall on the, on the tombstone room. Not tombstone, mule kick. You go uh, prone and pick up the VHS tape and then play it in the TV area here. You're actually gonna play a game of Simon Says. On these TV screens, they're gonna light up. It's gonna play a sequence of four, so you can write it down. So like three, uh, one, two, four. You can write that down, shoot the TVs, and you're gonna do Simon Says and it's gonna stack. So every time it does Simon Says again, you're gonna do three, two, one, four, and then the next strand of uh, Simon Says coding that it does. So now we have three, one, two, four, and then four, one, two, three. So it stacks. You're gonna do this three times, and once you've done all three of them, all the TV's gonna light up, and you're gonna interact with this middle green TV. Uh, another prerequisite here, you're going to need Tombstone. You're gonna need the Tombstone perk because you're gonna need to go into the spectral mode here. But after you've interacted with that, you're gonna run down into the bunker area and you're actually gonna down yourself in front of this area that I'm gonna show you here and attempt to use the, uh, the Tombstone little ghost to revive yourself. But you're not gonna revive yourself immediately. So I'm gonna pull a grenade and down myself right here. This is actually a pretty nerve wracking step for the side Easter egg. So I'm gonna activate Tombstone and then I'm going to run over to my body. I actually take the wrong pathing here. You're gonna want a, a gun that shoots quite a lot. Again, the Crystal Axe on its gun variant is a perfect candidate for this. Uh, Speed Cola might help you out as well. So if you run back to the body, you're gonna be shooting um, these little guys floating in midair. You're gonna shoot the ones that have a glowing orange head. I'm actually gonna show it here in just a moment, a, a zoomed in version of that, so it's easier to see. Yep, that guy right there. So every time they spread apart, you're gonna shoot the glowing one and tell that you uh, have shot it so many times that there's only one left standing. You're basically then going to shoot that one left standing as many times as it takes for him to disappear, and then you need to revive yourself before you die. <laughs> this is actually pretty sketchy because I didn't have a self revive at this point, so if I fail this step, I'm basically, that that's it for me. So I'm gonna kill him, I try to revive myself, it starts to reload, I am on like an inch of health, centimeter of health, but I'm able to get the revive off. Once you get the revive off, you will get a free perkaholic. It's gonna give you every perk in the game. It's perfect for this Easter egg and getting prepared. Um, then you're just going to want to get anything else you might need, like a death machine or the Casimir grenades, anything you may need. You're going to go back to that second area of the game and then build the contraption that you've basically had built since round 10. Uh, after a bit of dialogue, you're going to start an escort step similar to Outbreak 2's Easter egg, which I can do a tutorial for if you guys need be. Basically, you're gonna follow it along and you can pre-shoot these orange crystals if you need to. Shooting them is gonna give you a crystal that's gonna help power the, um, the drone that you're actually escorting right now. You're just gonna be killing zombies as you go, following along every time that the drone stops. You're just gonna go outside of its protected bubble for a second, grab yourself a crystal, and then put the crystal back into the machine. I'm gonna speed it up here for a little bit, but it is basically just that all the way down, just constantly refueling the drone. It's a pretty simple step, and you don't take a ton of damage outside the portal, and you won't be needed to be outside of it for very long. The more stressful one is the, uh, the top of the ladder segments there, but it is pretty simple. And once you get to the end, there's actually going to be an area where you can, you know, pack a punch, buy perks, buy equipment, do anything that you need to do prior to the boss fight. Speaking of boss fights, I'm gonna give you guys a little pep talk before we go into the boss room. The Forsaken boss fight is basically boiled down to you breaking his armor in four locations. The first two are the shoulder pads, then you'll have a brief uh, segment with a cutscene, then the stomach, then the head. 
after you've done this, or at the, the same time as you're doing this, really. You could be killing zombies underneath Samantha, wherever she is. If she gets her uh, meter all the way to the full, it's on the left side of your screen. She will then power the, uh, the uh, Dark Aether Blazer turrets, and you're going to use that turret to deal damage to the boss wherever you broke his armor. Again, in the first segment, you're going to do it in the shoulder pads, and then the stomach, and then the head. His armor will reset between the stomach and the head, but the shoulder pads you can do bang bang one after another. Uh, but I'm going to leave the boss fight in there in its entirety. I might speed it up a little bit, but it's basically just that. It's a pretty straightforward boss fight. So I'll see you guys in the boss room here in a second as we're confronting the Forsaken. There we go. So I usually run straight to where Maxis is, and I just get a couple of kills with the uh, the Crystal Axe machine gun variant. Not kills. I get a, a, a little bit of damage to his shoulders. Then I will back up to wherever Samantha is. I'm going to drop uh, Ring of Fire and then break the shoulder pads and get the rest of the kills with the Ring of Fire uh, to fuel the machine gun turret. There's Bang. There's Bang. I'm going to kill the rest of these zombies with the Ring of Fire Crystal Axe. I'm going to go up to the turrets. Once it's online, I'll be able to drop in and use it, shooting one of the shoulders until the turret stops shooting, and then we're going to rinse and repeat this for the other shoulder. Uh, his armor is already broken, so now you can just get kills underneath Samantha until she's going to fly over and power the second turret shot. Then again, rinse and repeat, grab on the turret, shoot the shoulder, and you're good to go for the first phase of the boss fight. Then he's just going to drop you into a little cutscene segment, uh, basically just him trying to convince you to stop the fight because if you see the fight through, everyone will be dead because of Samantha, supposedly. So you're going to ignore him, Samantha's going to drop you in a portal, and you're going to come back to the boss fight again, starting off by shooting the stomach. Once you break the armor of the stomach, you can have Samantha fuel the turrets, shoot his stomach with the turret, and then you're going to have to break his head, break his head, fuel the turrets, shoot the turrets, and that's essentially the boss fight. So Samantha's dropping us in a portal right now. I'm going to leave the rest of the boss fight in a little sped up, and I'll see you guys here in a second. And once you see the last of his health drain, that's it. You can live or die, either or you have beaten the Forsaken Easter Egg. Um, usually I just let myself die because I think it kills a couple of the dialogue short and it gets to the cutscene a little bit faster, but essentially after that you're done. You're uh, just gonna have a cutscene play out. If you've been following all the maps prior to this point, you've been following the Dark Aether story, this is gonna be the, the uh, conclusion that you've been waiting for. The story will continue on to Treyarch's next game, presumably, but if you are a big fan of Zombies of Old, the ending of this cutscene will get you pretty uh, pretty excited, pretty fan y at the very end of this cutscene here. I'm not going to show the full cutscene, and I'm not going to play it in sound because it does have a copyrighted song, but this is the end of it. You can just sit back, eat a sandwich, drink a rock star, and just, you know, hang out. Um, if you do like this and you're new around here, please consider giving that subscribe button, the Omega Fist Fire Thorn Punch, as it's free. It really helps us out. And comment down below any content recommendations you'd like to see from this channel. It has been a blast doing these zombie tutorials, and I would love to keep doing them, maybe even for the rest of Cold War, for uh, different games, or just playing zombies in general. I've actually been very interested in going for Dark Aether, as I haven't yet. Um, so if you guys would like to see me farm out some Dark Aether, or play some different games that you have in mind, you know, Dark Souls, uh, Elden Ring, or just any other games. Leave your suggestions down below. I want to make content that you guys want to see. But otherwise, thank you so much for coming out today, and we will see you guys on the next video. Happy hunting, guys.